So I was being interviewed recently and the interviewer asked me, when did I know that I was going to become a musician? And you know, my stock answer has always been, oh, you know, the summer of eighth grade when I broke my ankle and I learned to play the guitar, but it's actually not true. I started thinking about it and there was something that happened before then. And it was really the summer of sixth grade. It's always summertime, right? So um, summer of sixth grade, just before the school year ended, uh, my orchestra teacher, Ken Brown, came to me and said, Rick, um, what do you think about switching to the bass from the cello? Honestly, I love the cello, but I never really was much of a cellist. I didn't really get into it. I played in a section with, there were six cellists at the time. I sat like fourth chair or something. I never really practiced. Even though I loved the instrument, I just was, I played sports. I did other stuff, right? So I was like, um... All right, I'll try the bass. Now, I didn't own a bass, so they were too expensive for any of the kids to own. So the music, the, the school actually had basses. Everybody had their own bass that you kept at school. So you really couldn't practice, but in order to learn it, I had to have it home for the summer. So he drove it over to my house. And I took one lesson a week to get ready to start playing for the next year. But the thing that he said is, I want you to play in this chamber orchestra this summer. I said, what is that? He said, it's just a small group. It's of 7th, 8th, and ninth graders, you know, rising 7th graders and 8th and ninth graders. And you're going to play this one piece called the Bach Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 3, G major. I said, okay. Uh, he goes, I want you to work on the music first. So he starts by teaching me the strings. Now, cello and bass are very different. The cello is tuned in fifths, just like the violin, like the viola, like the mandolin. The bass is tuned in fourths, like the guitar. Okay, so it's kind of a different thing. The hand spacing is different. Everything's different about it. I love the sound of bass. So I was like, okay, cool. So we start our lessons, and he starts teaching me the thing. I was like, okay, these are the open strings, but we start working on the piece. And I already had technique because I could play with a bow. I mean, I already been playing for a few years. So it wasn't like I was an absolute beginner trying to learn how to saw through the thing. You know, I was like rosin up the bow, you know, stand up correctly, get the right finger spacing and play. I played French bow on the cello, played French bow on the bass, right? There's French and German bow. Anyways, so I was like, I start playing this piece, but I don't know the piece because I'm just playing the bass part. So he says, go to the public library and get out the Bach Brandenburg Concertos. I'm sure that they have them there. So I go up to the Fairport Public Library, which I've talked about many times on my channel. If it wasn't for the Fairport Public Library, there would be no Rick Beato Everything Music Channel. I, I go up there and I look and of course there was an album double album Bach Brandenburg Concertos, which I sign out, I stamp my thing, give my library card, I go home, and I put it on. I have no idea what it sounds like other than the bass line. Well, this is what it sounded like. So I went back and I listened to it again. I'm not playing the bass along with it. I'm just listening. I got chills. So after listening to it, I thought, okay, now I'm going to try and play along with it. And it took a couple days to like it actually play at that tempo along with it. But once I played along with it, this was a life changing thing. It, to be able to play along with this, reading the music, my music stand there and I'm playing along like I'm in this string orchestra. This is really unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. 
So a few weeks go by and we're getting ready to have our first rehearsal. And I show up, I was at the junior high, Minerva Deland, and I'm the only bass player there. I mean, I didn't even think about it. It's like, there's a full string orchestra, about 20 kids, but I'm the only bass player. And unlike being in the cello section where you're kind of hidden in there, if you make a few mistakes or whatever, nobody really notices, right? But when your part is exposed like that, especially with the bass, the bass is what the entire orchestra tunes to, right? You got to be in tune. And there's a lot of pressure because it's so exposed that everybody can hear you. But this thing, playing, hearing this, these parts, we didn't sound this good, but we were pretty good. By the time I started playing, probably after one practice, I knew the entire bass part for all three movements. The second movement is only about 20 seconds long. The third movement is, is even faster. It's a lot of running uh, lines in it. Listen. I became a musician because of this. I knew that this was going to be my life's work. I listened through all the concertos. I never heard music that beautiful. To be part of a chamber ensemble to do this was a level of seriousness that I had never experienced before. It was like the first time I became a musician or I thought this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And once I found my true voice on the guitar a couple years later, then it just, it made me become even more serious about being a bass player. I mean, I majored in bass in college. That's my undergrad degree. Those of you that have watched the channel, you know that. I was a classical bass major for my undergrad and a jazz guitar for my master's degree. I consider myself kind of first a classical musician because that's what I did. So when you're a parent or if you're a parent and you have kids and um, the one thing that you can always hope for your kids that they find a passion, whatever it is, whether it's music, whether it's sports, whether it's art, whether it's graphic design, whether it's whatever it is, if they can find that something that they want to dedicate their life to, I am incredibly fortunate that I grew up in a place that valued music, that had an incredibly good public music school program. And they had teachers like Ken Brown, who was my orchestra director, that took a real interest. He was a fantastic, fantastic teacher, conductor, player. I will never forget that. And once again, that's why I am here today. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.